Hello, good morning, brothers, sisters, church and living God. Uh, beg your pardon, it's actually 12.02 my time, so good afternoon. <laughs> uh, well, brethren, sisters, church and living God, um, just very quickly, um, there are going to be coming quite a few videos here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, big, big videos. Um, the Lord has just, wow, just opened up the scriptures on several things. And there are going to be coming some pretty big videos. Um, Lord willing, uh, what they are going to consist of Going to, Lord willing, do a video on the sign of the prophet Jonas. Um, let's say it, the scriptures. Um, also, too, a word study, Lord willing, will be coming here um, sometime soon. Also, addressing the touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And also another video, uh, Lord willing, uh, that will be coming here in the near future. This absurdity of Jesus would want you to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lord willing, uh, Lord willing, that is that is what is coming, Lord willing, okay? <clears throat> Still got a lot to uh, study and look up. But uh, Lord willing, that is what is coming. And also, too, brethren, um, please keep us in your prayers. Uh, we value your prayers above all things. And we pray for so many of you, so many of you, my wife and I. Um, my wife today at the recording of this video is not doing that well. So please keep your sister, my wife, Susan, in your prayers. Please. Please. But now, go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Yes, going to be using two of these today. Maybe. We'll see how this goes. Let me ask you a question. Have any of you out there heard of this thing called the serpent seed Doctrine. Have you ever heard of that? Hmm? What is the serpent seed doctrine? The serpent seed doctrine, okay, is this false heresy teaching that teaches that the serpent lie with Eve. Hence, that Cain is the um, of the seed of the serpent, because the serpent was Satan lay with new Eve, and that breaks off into many different areas of heresy. Okay. Um, have any of you heard of these heretics that go by the name of the Shepherd's Chapel? Once pastored by this guy named Arnold Murray, and it is now being led on by his son, Daniel or David Murray, something like that. Um, they're, they're very wicked. They're very wicked. Uh, they're called the Shepherd, Shepherd's Chapel. They are what is known as Bullingerites. What's a Bullingerite? E.W. Bullinger. Have you ever heard of him? Okay, now apparently this E.W. Bullinger is a direct descendant from one of the reformers, um, something Bullinger. Um, I, I, I forget. His first name starts with an H. But this E.W. Bullinger guy is supposedly a direct descendant of one of the uh, reformers called Bullinger. And this E.W. Bullinger was woo -hoo -hoo, pretty crazy. 
Um, some of you may know Bollinger uh, as the one who did the notes for what is called the Companion Bible, which the Shepherd's Chapel uh, recommends. And when you look into this E.W. Bollinger guy, um, he believes some crazy stuff. Um, he believed, for example, that the church began with Paul, hyperdispensationalism. Okay? That there was one body of the Jew and that there is one of the Gentile. That's heresy. Okay? He also, um, this uh, now talking about the Shepherd's Chapel guy, he uh, did a study on the mark of the beast and um, tries to refute that the mark of the beast is not an implantable chip or something that's in your forehead. Uh, very, very wicked. Very wicked. Also, the Shepherd's Chapel, who are Bollingerites, are adherents to the serpent seed doctrine. And also that there are ten lost tribes, and those ten lost tribes uh, of Israel are in England and came over here to America. You, you, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, uh, some pretty crazy stuff. Um, if any of you come across the Shepherd's Channel, uh, Shepherd's Chapel, Arnold Murray, or anything like that, stay away from them. Stay away from them. Okay, uh, they they use the authorized version of the scriptures, but if you listen to this Arnold Murray, he corrects the text of the authorized version with the Greek. Oy vey. Oy vey. But <clears throat> serpent seed doctrine. Serpent seed doctrine. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Genesis chapter 3. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? Follow me along. We've been down this before, but we have to go through this again. Can you handle that? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The serpent is Satan, okay? And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, questioning what God had said. Okay, yea, hath God said. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, which he did not say, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And I have a whole video on this already. Ye shall be, uh, ye are gods. I have a video on that. I'll link it in this one, okay? And what Satan offered Eve is that her eyes would be open, knowing good and evil. Okay? Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, that your eyes will be open, knowing good and evil. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband, Adam, with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Let's continue reading, shall we? Why don't we, while we're at it, go ahead and read this whole chapter? Why not? Let's continue. <clears throat> so, from 1 on to verse 7, both Adam and Eve disobeyed the word of God, okay? They were commanded not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
Okay, that was their one stipulation. Do, do whatever. Just don't eat of that tree. Satan, yea, hath God said, you eat that, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be wise, knowing good and evil. Okay, which curtails on to judging, judgment. Okay, let's continue. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk unless he hath a body? Okay. The voice of the Lord, the word made flesh, walking in the cool, in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk unless it has a body? You go figure that one out, Trinitarian. Okay. Let's continue. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. See, they disobeyed the commandment of the Lord. Their eyes were open, and because they disobeyed, and ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because they did that, because they disobeyed, sin entered in. Okay? Sin was there. They didn't keep the commandment of the Lord. They broke a commandment of the Lord. He said, don't do this. They did it. Hence, sin came in. Okay? That's why you and I are born sinners. Okay? After the similitude or similitude of Adam. Okay? Okay? You, you get this so far? That's very simple. Okay? Now let's continue. <clears throat> now here, verse 11, is when our Lord were giving Adam a chance to man up and to take accountability and responsibility for what he had done. Okay? And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now, if God did not know what had happened, then that would mean God is not omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. That would mean that God doesn't know everything. Hey, you really want to entrust your soul, everything that you are, Unto a God who doesn't know everything. What God are you serving? Let's continue. <clears throat> and the man said. The woman. Whom thou gavest me. Gavest to be with me. She gave me of the tree. And I did eat. And that right there. And I've talked about this in several videos. That right there, you can refer to as the Adamic nature. Yes, Adamic nature is not found within the scriptures. The old man is, okay? The old man who is dead in trespasses and sins, okay? But what did he do? He blamed God for God giving him the woman, which caused him to eat of the tree, and yeah, he did eat, okay? Blaming someone else. Not taking responsibility or accountability for what he had done as he had, sh as he should have done. Okay? He blew it. Now, <clears throat> and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? Giving the woman the chance to man up, so to speak, complain, to um, confess, repent, that kind of stuff. Okay? And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, beguiled, tricked, hoodwinked, bamboozled, pulled the wool over your eyes. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The good old, the devil made me do it. Yeah, yeah, because the, remember, the devil is holding a gun at your head, forcing you to do things just like our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is holding a gun at your head, forcing you to do things. Hell. <clears throat> Never mind. 
And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, note this, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Serpents slither on the ground. And I've mentioned this before. There are some snakes out there, serpents, that wear the butt end of a snake. They're, they're like their pelvis or whatever it is. There are, in some snakes, there are little holes in their skeletal thing that suggests that at one time they had legs. You look that up on your own time. Very interesting. Proving the science of the scripture. Okay? Now, let's continue. Verse 15. The first prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. You know our Father, Lord Jesus Christ? Right here. And this I have also addressed in an expository video on Genesis chapter 12. Okay, I'll try to I'll try to remember to link all these. Okay, I'm going to put that in the description box as well. Okay, right here. And I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman. Satan will first go after the woman. He will go after men, but he goes on to the woman. And remember uh, what it says in Peter um, that the woman is the weaker vessel. Okay, you have to remember that. And you women out there, if you got a problem with that, you you take it up with the Lord and His Word, the Scriptures. Okay, but anyway, okay, Satan will go after the woman because the woman is supposed to be a keeper at home. Okay, taking care of the house. Okay, go after the woman and put a little um, whatever into her. Get her to start um, doing whatever. And sin can mess the whole house up, okay? Because a woman, according to the scripture, is supposed to be a keeper at home, okay? Again, uh, I got a couple, I got a, the woman of God, uh, two part videos uh, thing on that as well, okay? But anyway, let's continue. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Go to Micah. Hold your place here. Uh, actually, <laughs> two-fisted scripture study. Okay. Go to Micah. This is something that I should have added in that one video, but uh, this was recently showed to me. Like when you're when you're studying the scriptures, and you believe in the scriptural Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, um, the fact that there are so many proofs out there within the scriptures, in the scriptures, excuse me, that categorically prove that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? Similar on that note, um, the Lord showed this to me about Genesis 3.15. Okay, Micah chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now let's read Genesis chapter 15 again. Genesis 3, verse 15 again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, what is the it? Her seed. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay? Micah chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us, that they shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. The judge of Israel. Who is the judge of Israel? The son of David. Who is the son of David? King of the Jews. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. Okay, <clears throat> but thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from 
everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth, she that which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Okay? Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. I already covered this in the Genesis on uh, the Revelation chapter 12 expository study video, which was a correction um, to another video that I had done. And right now I can't remember it. But anyway, this woman is Israel. Twelve stars, twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, let's keep reading. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Okay. Let's continue. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragging ha dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne okay look at that verse and she brought forth a man child who is that man child the Lord Jesus Christ okay the Lord Jesus Christ go to John chapter 4 John chapter 4 okay John chapter 4, <clears throat> verses 21, oh no, verses 19 on to verse 26. John chapter 4. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Not Roman Catholicism. Not the morons. Yeah, going to be referencing this. It is of the Jews. And where did our Lord Jesus Christ spring from? Israel, the Jews, Judah. Okay? Let's continue. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Right there, our Lord Jesus Christ claimed to be the Messiah. Okay? Mr. Haggy, <clears throat> on you. Okay? Now go back to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Verses 14 on to verse 17. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place, whereas she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent, the devil, Satan, okay? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, 
and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Clear prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. Okay? Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 and verse 28. Okay? Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out at the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. A Gentile, a woman of Canaan, Okay, a Gentile called Jesus Christ, O Lord, thou son of David. She was a Gentile. Okay. And you read later on within the scriptures in the gospel accounts that the blind guy said, uh, O Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he stood still because he was a Jew recognizing that Jesus Christ is the son of David the king of the Jews, the promised Messiah, who is offering unto them the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Matthew. Okay? Okay? But it was to the Jew first. Okay? Let's continue. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came, and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Elsewhere, uh, it says that our Lord said, It is not meet to give the uh, children's bread bread onto the dogs. Okay? It's to the Jew first. It was to the Jew first. Okay, let's continue. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from the very hour. Some like to say that this Gentile woman was saved and they go to this. But no, all this says is that his her daughter was healed because she had faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing about her being saved in that passage. Okay? Okay? Look, look, look at the text. Okay? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> look at the text. Look at the text, okay? Now go to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. My fingers will get there. Acts chapter 13, verses 44 under verse 52. Okay? Acts chapter 13, verses 44 under verse 52. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting them and blaspheming. And Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of, un of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And that's not referring to elect and non-elect of 
Calvinism, okay? Give me a break. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. Fancy that, huh? And the chief men of the city. And raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came on to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Okay? It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Why are we looking at this in depth? To prove that this seed talked about of the woman here in Genesis, 3, uh, Genesis 3 verse 15 is referring on to Israel and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That's why we are, I guess I've covered this before, but for this video, we have to cover it again. Fast forward if you don't want to hear this again, okay? Love you. One more stop. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Okay? The seed of the woman, making this uh, uh, Genesis 3 verse 15, prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The seed of the woman is, number one, the woman is Israel, the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. The seed, Lord Jesus Christ. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah? Okay, that's in the book of Hebrews. You go find that yourself, okay? Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1. Under verse 16. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. What is that? Um, Learn of me, for I am lowly and meek in heart. Um, gross paraphrase there, beg your pardon. That's in the book of Matthew, I believe. Okay. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord. He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for light of the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. You Catholics and your graven images. That's why you remove one of the commandments so you can have your graven images. Wicked Catholics. Okay. Behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. That's not a capital R, but the inhabitants of the rock. <laughs> Let's continue. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealously like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. Isn't that interesting, huh? 
I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all the herbs. And I will make the rivers, islands, and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by the, a way that they know, knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Okay? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, okay, what more proof do you need that it is a prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ? Okay? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Satan goes after the woman. He goes after the woman first. He will go after us men. Yes, hello, he, he, he will. But what said the scripture? What example do we have here in Genesis chapter 3? He goes on to the woman. Where was Adam? Who knows what he was doing? But he was not there being head over his wife. Warning. Okay? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, between thy seed, her seed, we just looked at. Her seed, Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Okay? Her seed, prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? What is thy seed? Oh, that's Cain. No. No. Thy seed, right there? And between thy seed and her seed. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I also have an expository study video on Second Thessalonians. I made an uh, error in that video, but corrected it. Um, I make mistakes, and I, and I correct my mistakes. When I am corrected by the Lord, through the scriptures, through a brother or sister. Okay? And you need to know that. I'm fallible. The scriptures are infallible. Okay? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Thy seed. What is thy seed? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. My notes are right here. Verses 3 on to verse 12. Let no man deceive you by any means. That day, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. That Arnold Murray guy who is dead and in hell, okay? That Arnold Murray guy of Shepherd's Chapel, he did a teaching on the mark of the beast. Total heresy. Um, I can't even begin to describe how wicked and how um, Luke, just nasty, <laughs> his um, thing on the mark of the beast was. But he said that Arnold Murray guy of Shepherd's Chapel and his kid guy or his son, whatever, who's doing it nowadays, they say that the Church of the Living God is going to see the son of perdition. Okay? And they say, as they say right here, Let no man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed to son of perdition. See? So, yeah, the church of the living God is going to see the son of perdition. No. 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 Hence, Shepherd's Chapel, Bullingerites, are not, do not believe in the catching away of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, before the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? They don't believe in that. Obviously. But let's continue. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth 
that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The he who now letteth will let is referring on to the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? It's referring to the church of the living God until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. The redemption of the purchased possession. Verse 8. And then, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Look at this. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivable, deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, not condemned, damned, who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And I will put, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay? What is thy seed? What is thy seed? Okay? What is that? I will be like the Most High. Replace. Okay? Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist, by the way, is found in the scriptures. Thank you very much. Okay? Antichrist is against Christ, yes. But it is also to replace Christ. Okay? That's what that is. A replacement. Another Christ. A, another testament of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? Another Christ. The Catholic priests are other Christs. Replacement. See? Okay? Okay? Which comes of the devil. That is his seed. Okay? Replacement theology. They say they are Jews and they are not. Okay, that is his seed. Okay, do you get me? Yes, yes, okay. Now, let's continue in Genesis chapter 3. On to the, uh, at verse 16. On to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in, uh, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. The man is the head. The man is the head over the woman. Deal with the scriptures. It's not that God thinks less of you, woman. No, not at all. You, as woman, bring life into the world. Okay? Okay? God, man, woman, children. Not God, woman, children, pets, man. Okay? No. No. And you women out there. You got a problem with that? You have a problem with the scriptures. You have a problem with the Lord. Deal with it. That a little blunt for you? Let's continue. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Okay? And hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. 
In sorrow shalt thou eat, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Look at verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And looking at verse 19, For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that an interesting little uh, thing there to notice, huh? Let's continue. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Something had to die to cover Adam and Eve. Okay, I've addressed that in several videos as well. Not going to expound on it in this video. Okay. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, people, we went through the entire chapter of Genesis chapter 3. Did you see anything? anything, even slightly hinting that the serpent lay with Eve. Very similar to um, those who say Ham's sin was that of a sodomite nature. I also have a video on that, uh, talking about what Ham's sin is was, okay? But do you see anything the like? In Genesis chapter 3. No, you do not. No, you do not. Let's drive the nail into the coffin. As some of you were already, like Brad, why haven't you read Genesis chapter 4 verse 1? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Those of you people who might adhere to the serpent seed doctrine. You wicked devils of Shepherd's Chapel and those who are duped by those devils. It don't get no plainer than this. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. From the Lord, Cain. Okay? A man from the Lord. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's pretty, pretty obvious, isn't it? Let's continue, though. Let's continue, though, in Genesis chapter 4. Okay? And she again bare his brother Abel. There are those out there who say that Cain and Abel were twins. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now you have to remember. Sin came in. The first dispensation, the Garden of Eden, ended. This is now the 
dispensation of the patriarchs, you could say, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? A dispensation similar to our own, yet different. Okay? Let's continue. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Okay? Just grew naturally. Just grew naturally. Okay? And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. Okay? And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance, his outward appearance, fell. He wanted the Lord's affection. And he was angry. Sin. He was in sin. What? What's wrong with mine? You preferred his over mine? Jealousy? Envy? Hatred? Okay? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7. And we're going to expound on this a little bit. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. Self-explanatory, right? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We will be reading verses 33 on to verse 44. John chapter 8. Get a load of this. They answer John 8 verses 33 on to verse 44. And they answered him. We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now, very quickly, these Bibles, not the scriptures, the ESV, the NIV, the, uh, the New American Standard. You've got devils like John MacArthur, for example, say that servant is wrongly translated and it ought to be slave. Okay? That whenever you see servant, it means slave. A slave doesn't have a will of their own. A servant does. Hence, corrupting the scriptures by taking out servant and saying that it ought to be slave in every occurrence, putting a blanket term or blanket cover over it, saying that every time that whatever the Greek word is, John MacArthur knows, um, says it ought to be slave. No, no, no. See, because a slave has not his own will. Does he? And hence, you put slave in there, what does that give that credence? What does that give way to? Elect and non-elect. Calvinism. Slaves of Christ. You're a slave of Christ, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. He's not forcing you to do anything. You have the free will to do. Okay? You do. And amen, brother, sister, don't we wish that sometimes we didn't have the free will to do? Right? But that's the way it is. We have free will. Okay? It's servant. Let's continue. Verily I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Um, Genesis 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, thou shalt not be accepted, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, Sin lieth at the door, 
and unto thee shall and unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. Let's continue in John, okay? And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Genesis chapter uh, 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. Oh, we learning something yet. Let's continue, okay? Verse 37 again. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus saith unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. Okay? Ye are the ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. Okay? Verse 7 in uh, Genesis chapter 4. If thou doest well, thou shalt shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, comma, sin lieth at the door. Unto thee shall be his desire. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Now, what about this? And thou shalt rule over him? Rule over Satan? Rule over sin? What does that mean? What does that mean? Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I also have a, an expository video on Romans chapter 6 too. Okay? Romans, come on, Brad, get there. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. What shall we what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not? That so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, our old man, unregenerate, who you were before you were saved, okay? That old man that was of Adam, okay? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 
Okay. See, they put slave in here. The devil made me do it. No. Let's continue. Okay. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. We're all going to die. Yes. Death. The second death. Okay. The second death. Let's continue. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey the lusts thereof. Obey the lusts thereof. And thou shalt rule over him. Obey the lusts. And thou shalt rule over him. Okay? Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness, of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. And unto thee, reading Genesis chapter 4, uh, verse 7, And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Mm. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Right here. Right here. Pay attention. Okay. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, not slaves. You have free will. Satan is not forcing you. The Lord is not forcing you. We have free will. Okay? We do. Amen. Sometimes, brother, sister, church of the living God, amen. Don't you wish sometimes you didn't have free will. But we do. God doesn't want robots. We're not robots. Okay? You got to get that through your head. And see, when you got these whack jobs like MacArthur and all these, yea, hath God said, Jesuitical trained textural critics that come out of these cemetery schools that replace servant with slave, giving credence onto Calvinism, elect and non elect. You see what kind of troubles you get into? Let's read this again. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants, his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience on to righteousness. Do you get it? Verse 7 in Genesis chapter 4. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Unfortunately, there are those out there who, where the devil will tempt, be allowed to tempt, okay? To put something in your eye, uh, in front of your eyes, to put something in your ear, okay? We learn in Job that in order for Satan to afflict those of the church and living God, those who are right with the Lord, we learn from Job that Satan needs God, needs the permission of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to do anything. Unto, especially those who are, who are of his bones and of his flesh. But for others, all Satan really needs to do is put just a little thing there for some people. 
And that little leaven would be enough for some to latch on to, and they go on in their own power being servants unto sin. Do you get it? Do you get it? Now, of the church of the living God, you decide to serve that sin, that lust, whatever it is, the Lord Jesus Christ inside you and the Lord is that spirit is going to be screaming at you. Okay? And if you give yourself over, if you decide to serve sin as those of the church of the living God, you're going to be chasing, boy. You're going to be chasing hard. Let's continue in Romans. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, not slaves. Okay? But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. It's one of the main, one of many dangers of those. Roman Catholic Bibles. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now be made free from sin and become servants of God. Ye have your fruit on the holiness and the end after and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? Do you get it? Do you get it? I hope so. That's pretty plain. Okay? Now let's continue. Let's continue. Now, with what we had just looked at, comparing scripture with scripture, okay? What happens now with Cain? Okay, what happens now with Cain? Sin was in the world. Satan did not lay with Eve. A novice, a babe, may fall for that. But if you say, if you claim to be a Christian for years and years and years, and you're falling for something this stupid, And Adam, think about it. And Adam knew his wife. But, okay, now let's continue. What happened with Cain? What happened with Cain? And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. The first murder. Cold-blooded murder. Why? Because he was envious, jealous, hateful. Okay? The consequence of Adam and Eve disobeying the commandments of the Lord. Hence, the first dispensation of Scripture was done. Sin was in the world. Not relegated just to Cain. Okay? And look at this, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, lie. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Now, again, did God know what Cain had done. Yes. Because if he did not, 
then again, God is not omnipotent, omni, omniscient, omnipresent, doesn't know everything. I don't want to serve a God who doesn't know everything. What about you? Okay? The Lord gave Cain a chance to come clean. And what does he do? He lies. I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And isn't it interesting that Alcoholics Anonymous originally said, I am my brother's keeper? Taking that from Cain. Okay, let's continue. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Check this out. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. A mark upon Cain. Okay, now is this the serpent seed? No. Um, Eve, uh, Satan and Eve did not lie with one another. What do you do with Genesis chapter 4, verse 1? Okay, but I want to show you something. From, from the book of Moron. Okay, and Brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Okay. Joseph, Joseph Smith was a Mason. Okay. Okay. I hope that these morons, Mormons, get out of this cult and get saved. Okay. I do. I do. I hope that the Mormon people who are trapped by this heresy get out of that and truly get saved and born again and converted. Other than that, I have absolutely no respect for the religion of the morons. No respect whatsoever. Uh, whatsoever okay? But I want to show you something. Okay? And this is something that a young man <laughs> um, who I was aware of kind of went off into this uh, uh, area himself. Okay? Uh, second Nephi in this thing. Second Nephi, I believe it is chapter 26 here in Second Nephi. Oh, or is it uh, 25? Let me, let me look. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, okay. I might have to pause this. I'm going to pause this for one second. Hold on. All righty, brethren, sorry about that. I had to find this in this stupid thing. This is uh, the Book of Moron, 2 Nephi, chapter 5. There are verses uh, 20 on to verse 24. Wherefore, the word of the Lord was fulfilled, which he spake unto me, saying that, Inasmuch as they will not hearken unto my words, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And behold, they were cut off from his presence. And he had caused the cursing to come upon them. Yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. Okay. Right there. Can you see that? A skin of blackness. From the morons. And thus saith the Lord God, 
I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people, save they shall repent of their iniquities. And cursed shall be the seed of him that mixeth with their seed, for they shall be cursed even with the same cursing. And the Lord spake it, and it was done. And because of their cursing which was upon them, they did become an idle people full of mischief and subtlety, and did seek in the wilderness for beasts of prey. You heard it yourself. Curse of blackness. Mormons consider people who have black skin cursed. I just read it for you. That is based upon the serpent seed doctrine. Okay? I have met, seen, at my old house, a black Mormon. You see a black Mormon? It's like you want to go, what's wrong with you? <clears throat> you know? You, no, you know, you don't do that. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, do, do you not know what your own cult says of your skin color? Well, I've repented. Uh, people who have a black skin color are cursed? Right. But see, that gives credence onto the serpent seed doctrine. Okay? That comes from the serpent seed doctrine. Okay? And when you look into the serpent seed doctrine, you, you're going to find, you're going to see the morons come up. Okay? So, let's continue. Now, now, we are in Genesis chapter 4. The mark, we don't know what kind of mark it was on Cain, but we do know this. It was not a black skin color. Chapter and verse on that, please. In the scriptures. Okay? Some kind of mark was on Cain. It wasn't black skin color. And those of you, brethren, sisters of the Church of the Living God, who are black, take offense to moronism. Founded by Joseph. Joseph Smith, a Mason. Okay, now let's continue here. Uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mahushala, and Mahushala begat Methuselah, Methusel, 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 excuse me, and Methusel begat Lamech. And Lamech took on to him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zelah. And Adah bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zelah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zilah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. And Abraham knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. Set, for God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there were born uh, was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. 
So see, the serpent seed doctrine that these guys at the uh, Shepherd's Chapel and several other, that uh, Bullinger guy, these these evil twits, the morons adhere to, it runs into, there are those who are bad people. They are the line of Cain. And there are those of good people, right? Whatever line they come from, okay? Seth, right? So there's good people and there's bad people. The bad people are the line of Cain. Okay? Because according to this ridiculous serpent seed doctrine, Satan had relations with Eve. And Genesis chapter 4 <coughs> blows it right out of the water. Why do people get into this? I do not know. Now I want to show you something very interesting. Okay? Now, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Okay? Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Okay? We're going to read... Okay, Genesis chapter 5. Oh, no, we just read, excuse me, in Genesis chapter 4. Okay, the descendants of Cain, beg your pardon, the descendants of Cain. Okay, we just read. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod and on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare, and bare Enoch. Okay, we have just looked at the genealogy, so uh, as it is, of Cain from verses 16 on to verse um, 24, okay? And then Seth comes into the picture, okay? In, Gen in Genesis chapter 5 now, now here's where I'm going to use the other set of scriptures that I have in my hand, okay? Genesis chapter 5, come on. Come on, Genesis chapter 5. Come on, man. Whoops. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. We're going to read this entire chapter. Genesis chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made him, made he him. Spirit, soul, and body. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Okay? Now, and the days of Adam, Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. Now, okay, where does it say here? Uh, okay, okay, hold on. And begat Enos, okay? And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Enos lived ninety years and begat Canaan. Canaan came of Seth. Okay? And now look in the genealogy of Cain. Okay? Look in the genealogy of Cain. We have Tubal Cain, okay? We have Enoch, Irad, uh, Mehushala, and Mehushel, uh, and Lamech, Ada, and whatnot, okay? We do not see a Canaan of the line of Cain, do we? Okay? And Enos, uh, back in Genesis chapter 5, and Enos lived after he begot Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos, were 905 years, and he died. And Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. Okay, and now do we see a Mahalalel in the line of Cain? No, we do not. 
do we? We see a Mahujalah, and Mahujalah begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. Okay, let's continue. And Cainan lived after he begat Mahalalil 840 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Cainan were 910 years and he died. And Mahalalil lived 60 and five years and begat Jared. And Mahalalil lived after he begat Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalil were 890 and five years and he died. And Jared lived an hundred and sixty and two years and begat Enoch, Enoch of Seth. Look in Genesis chapter 4, verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and Enoch of Cain, and then Enoch of Seth. Interesting, huh? Verse 19 in Genesis chapter 5. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. We see a Methuselah here in the line of Cain? No. No, we do not. Okay. Uh, where were we? Okay. Uh, verse 21 in Genesis chapter 5. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. And after he begat Methuselah, 300 years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And Methuselah lived 107 years and begat Lamech. Is there a Lamech of the line of Cain? And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zelah. This is verse 23 in Genesis chapter 4. Okay? Hear in my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. There was a Lamech of the line of Cain and also an Enoch of the line of Cain. Okay? Let's continue. Uh, from verse 25. And Methuselah lived after lived an hundred and eighty and seven years, and begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years, and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years, and he died. And Lamech lived an hundred eighty and two years, and begat a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech were 770 70 and seven years and he died. 777. Seven, seven. And Noah was 500 years old and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, why did we look at that? Go to First Chronicles. Go to First Chronicles. Come on, First Chronicles. First Chronicles, chapter one. First Chronicles, chapter one. You know the one if you read the scriptures scriptures out loud to yourself after you finish the first fifteen chapters of the book of First Chronicles, your tongue feels like it's going to fall out, right? Because of all the names. Check this out. First Chronicles, chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 4. Note what is noted here in the scripture. First Chronicles, chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 4. Adam, Seth, 
Ninosh. Kinan, Mahalalil, Jareh, Hanak, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Adam, Seth, Sheth, Enos. And when you look in Genesis chapter 5, Enos, it lines up perfectly with the line of Seth. Okay? And it was from Seth, the line of Seth, came Noah. Comfort. Okay? What is the point? Where's the line of Cain mentioned in First Chronicles? Where's the line of Cain mentioned in First Chronicles? Okay? Where is it? Where is the line of Cain mentioned in the genealogy found in Matthew, which is the genealogy of Joseph, or in the genealogy found in Luke, which is the genealogy of Mary? Where do you see Cain? You don't. You don't. There are those that say, because of this satanic, Serpent seed doctrine that the line of Cain and that the Kenites now or something like that are alive today. I don't think so. I believe, brethren, that the line of Cain was extinguished in the flood. That is what I believe. I believe the line of Cain was extinguished because why is it mentioned? Why is it not mentioned in? First Chronicles, the very first chapter. Why is not Cain mentioned in any of the genealogy of, um, of uh, Jesus in Matthew and Luke? I believe that the uh, line of Cain was extinguished, done over with in the flood. But then they say, well, well what about Ham? Sin was in the world, see? Okay? Sin was in the world. Yes, it was. But the sea serpent seed thing is not true because of Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Okay? But the line of Cain, the seed of Cain. Okay? Go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. And here is one that the serpent seed twits will, will go to. Serpent seed twits. Devils. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Uh, actually, let's read verses 9 on to verse 12 in 1 John chapter 3. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. His seed, the Holy Ghost. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. This is talking about the Holy Ghost that is within you who are saved, born again, converted. The Holy Ghost that is within you is not going to lead you on to sin. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. The Holy Ghost in you is not going to sin. You will sin. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within those who are saved, born again, and converted, is not going to lead you into sin. Okay? That's what that's talking about. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, here's here we go, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Now, the serpent seed twits will come to this and say, see, it says that Cain was of that wicked one. Mingling in that Eve and Satan had relations. But there again... What saith the scriptures, you people who fall for this nonsense? Um, what saith the scriptures? Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. 
And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Cain was the firstborn, not the twin of Abel, the firstborn. You can liken the firstborn Cain there, you can liken it onto Reuben, who went up to his father's bed, okay? The younger, uh, the elder shall serve the younger. Look at Esau. Esau, um, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, okay? Do you get it, okay? The firstborn shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Okay? Esau and Jacob. Do you get it? It wasn't that Cain was born of Satan by some mythological fairy tale thing where Satan lay with Eve. No. No. Because we have what happened there in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, which we already looked at. Okay? Which we already looked at. Verse 7, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. It is not that Cain was born of Satan. That is heresy. That is you, 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 Genesis chapter 4, people. You know, like I said, boom, blown right out of the water. Blown right out of the water. Cain, because his offering was not accepted, was jealous, angry, vengeful, and committed murder. It wasn't that he was born of, uh, that Satan had laid with Eve. No, 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 no. No. He was doing the will of Satan. Sin. He was in sin. And the father of sin is who? Okay. So when these twits go to John, First John three twelve, which that which those guys at the shepherd's chapel do, they use John, First John three twelve to try to prove the serpent seed doctrine, and that contradicts with Genesis chapter four verse one. And they will use the serpent seed doctrine to to uh, to do their racism and lead into all kinds of things. Okay, okay. Serpent seed doctrine is heresy. But as far as the line of Cain itself, because they say that the line of Cain through the serpent seed doctrine is still. That the line of Cain is still with us today. I don't believe it is. One of the arguments is the wives of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The argument could be that we do not know if their wives were of the descendants of Cain. Can we prove that? No. Can we disprove that? Huh. Um, Seth. And we saw in First Chronicles, the very first chapter, Adam, Seth, Enos. Abel, dead. Killed by Cain. Cain was not mentioned. I believe that Cain, the line of Cain, died in the flood. But there again, sin was in the world because of Adam and Eve disobeying the commandment of God. Okay? Sin was in the world then because of that. Okay? Okay? Um, there are several, there are other verses that we can point to, to, well, 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 well let's go through this, okay? Um, go back now to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Looking at verse 12, okay? 1 John chapter 3. Looking at verse 12. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. And his brothers righteous. Excuse me. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verses 25 on to verse 26. 
Second Timothy chapter two. Come on, my verse. Second Timothy chapter two, verses twenty-five under verse twenty-six. All right. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him by his own will. Okay? Who are taken captive by him at his own will. Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. Oh, no, no, no. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, thou shalt, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. And, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay? And go to First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, in your brethren that are in the world. Okay? And note in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, what does that say? Revelation 5, verse 5. One of the elders says, Follow to me, not, The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Why, why did we look at that, Brad? He walketh about as a lion, counterfeit, seeking whom he may devour, who are snared at by him at his will. Huh? Snared. At, uh, by him at his will, as was Cain, not that he was of the actual physical seed of Satan. Do, do you see? Do you see? Okay? Because you got to remember, the sin of Satan is what? I will be like the Most High. Right? So that's going to be it for this video. Um, that I, I think we've pretty much shown the proof positive that the uh, serpent seed doctrine thing is absolute stupidity and foolishness. Um, Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 clearly blows it out of the water. And the serpent seed doctrine has bled over into moronism. Okay? And they use that and you read it. I, I You didn't read it, but I showed you. According to the morons, those who are black are cursed, according to the morons. Brethren, beware of this shepherd's chapel. Beware of this serpent seed doctrine. It is absolute heresy. Okay? The line of Cain, I do not believe, has survived. I believe that the line of Cain perished in the flood. But yet you have to remember, as in, as in Adam, all men die. Okay? You have to remember that. There was still, there was still sin. Okay? That's why our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, was manifest. Okay? To take away the sins of the world. To make the perfect atonement for sin on the cross. Okay. I believe that the line of Cain perished in the flood. Okay. But sin was still in the world, even though the Lord uh, caused um, a flood on the earth and to kill everybody except for Noah and his sons. 
Okay, I believe that the line of Cain was extinguished in the flood. Where is Cain in the genealogy and First Chronicles? Where is it? Is Cain mentioned in any of the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ, both in Matthew and in Luke, which pertain onto um, onto uh, Joseph and Mary? And you got to remember, Joseph was not the daddy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, you got to remember that. Okay, so um, hopefully, um, if you've never heard of this, good. If you have, hopefully this helps because the serpent seed doctrine is absolute heresy stupid it's plain stupid okay don't fall for it and brethren beware of this shepherd's chapel beware of them you stay away from them just because they read uh, from the authorized version of the scriptures don't mean they of the church of the living god okay so anyway that's going to be it for this video uh, like I said, more videos are coming in the future. Uh, thank you, brethren. Hope this has helped. I love you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.